So earlier today, I actually went to the pet store looking for uh, some type of tank mate for the puffer tank. And I got three pearl danios, as you can see right here. And they're pretty feisty fish, but also very, very colorful fish. And I'm not worried about the pearl danios attacking the puffers or vice versa, because actually... There's little pea puffers right here were actually with guppies in the tank at the pet store. Which guppies and danios are still two totally different fish, but uh, they're still much bigger than the puffers and also they're not aggressive. So there's one of the pea puffers right there, checking them out right there. And like I said, they shouldn't do anything to them or the puffers shouldn't do anything to them. They should just, you know, kind of stay up here schooling around. I just wanted to have something else in here to be up here in the water column because there really wasn't much besides, you know, the marble car down there, which is moving out in uh, about two days now and uh, the quarry cats of course on the bottom so that's why I got the pearl danios along with the puffers being in here now there are three other ones in here I can't find them right now because you know they're very very small but normally there is two of them out here just like that one's doing just kind of begging for food but we'll feed them in a little bit but for now I'm gonna let those guys finish acclimating Noah's turtles got the fish picture in last video correct this is the fish picture for this video be the first one to comment down below the correct name of that fish if you comment it's pinned then you get a shout out in the next video up here at the betas tank uh, I took the filter out the regular filter that was in here one reason only because of the current the current was actually very strong in here and the beta uh, couldn't do like much just like chilling out here in the front he would have to kind of go and like really fight the current to get up here so I take that out it's a much slower current that's still a you know a decent filter for this size tank it's only 5.5 gallon and as you can see the beta is doing a lot more peaceful swimming they do not like you know really strong currents at all so yeah now he can kind of swim around and you know check everything out speaking of betas here is the baby beta right here the baby female beta who has been doing a lot of growing and a lot of eating absolutely loves mice's shrimp we'll feed her in a few minutes of course and chungas of course my flower aren't always wanting to bite me always wanted to eat we'll come back and feed him in a few minutes so we're tank is looking good there's the royal grama right there the two frostbite clownfish of course clean your shrimp right down there and uh yeah the tank is doing great the african cichlid tank right here i'm gonna be getting the actual first cichlids for it and in just about two weeks now i'm gonna get like a lot of smaller cichlids in here i want to get like a bunch of small ones and just kind of like you know let them grow up in here i don't want to get like a i don't even want to get like medium size one. i want to get like really small ones and then of course i'll have like Senadonis catfish on the bottom all right so the pearl danios are now ready to go into the new tank uh they're pretty feisty ready to get out of the bag and there they are into their new tank look at them we're gonna go around and check it out and they should start schooling up pretty soon there goes one of the puffers right there he's gonna be constantly moving schooling fish that's why i wanted to get them in here to have like you know some more movement in here kind of like what we did with the white clouds in the crayfish tank but yeah there's one of the puffers right there all in the middle of them and those guys are already schooling up look at them Now the next morning, the Pearl Danios are all schooled up. They're doing great and all, but this is only a 10 gallon, so what I think I'm gonna do with them, not in this video, probably another video, is actually move them out to my 30 gallon Tetra tank because obviously it's a much bigger tank. And um, yeah, I think they would just do better out there than in this tank right here. You got the little pea puffers that are just, you know, really slow moving, and then they're like just darting around. So we'll get some other type of fish for this. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave them in there for now. Just a few days or so and uh then i'll probably actually move them out to the other tank now i'm gonna go and feed chungus right now i'm gonna pop a blowworm cube in here oh look at him go look at that guy go and when he eats his colors just automatically come out more he prefers me to drop a frozen cube in there for him to like break it apart instead of me like unthawing the bloodworms and then dumping them in there he likes to do it like this for some reason but yeah he'll kind of break that cube apart kind of like he's doing right now and try to get like the biggest chunk possible and uh, all the other ones that float around usually float to the bottom and then he goes around and picks them all up and as you can see most of that cube is now gone and it's just a few left on the bottom but and look at him coming back out for more he already wants another cube and i have been feeding him two cubes with uh these specific blood worms just because there's not that many in them but for right now that is enough for him we got some month old mice and shrimp right here i'm about to feed the puffers and uh just gonna see if the pearl danios will eat them all right just gonna drop these right on in they're going berserk right now but the puffers will definitely come out and eat them oh there's the marlboro cara pretty good look at him oh one's eating one 
There goes the puppers right there. And uh, one of the Danios actually just came out and got one. And this Marlboro Cara catfish has not bothered any fishing or nothing like that. He normally just stays back there in the back. And the only time that he really comes out swimming around is when I do feed him. There's also a little baby Santa Donis back there I'm raising up that is going to go into the African cichlid tank. But yeah, there's the Marlboro Cara right there. And like I said, it just a few days that we're going to move them out of this tank and into the pool pond with the turtles. I'll drop a few in here for the neons and the beta in this tank. Oh, look at them. Here they go. Here comes the beta coming out. Look at him. He really likes his tank now and is able to really swim around a lot more without that really strong current. Look at that guy. That guy just has some amazing colors on him. Oh. Look at him. He, he actually prefers to eat his food like once it is sunk down to the bottom and then you go around and like pick it up off the bottom. It's not really a beta that like goes up in the water column and gets it or at the surface or anything like that. Look at him right there. That's what he likes to do is search around the bottom for his food. So I got a few right here for the baby beta to eat. Watch this guy go. Look at him. Look at her I should say. Usually just two or three mice of shrimp is really all that she needs. And it won't be long before she is an adult beta. We're going to feed the saltwater tank some mice of shrimp. Look at the clownfish go. Here comes the royal grandma. Look at those guys just go. These guys could just, just always wanting to eat. Drop a few more on in. I mean, just look at them go. They just love to eat. And the shrimp, when he gets the smell of them, he normally comes running out. And, uh, of course, we'll feed the rest of the mice of shrimp to the tetra tank. Just dump it right on in. And look at these guys go. I actually got to feed them some blood worms today because it's actually been a little while since I fed them blood worms. And uh, that was actually not that much food for them. Yeah, it looked like a lot, but I promise you, it's not at all, actually. Even though there wasn't that much food compared to what I normally feed them, it was still a lot of individual little pieces of food. And, um, yeah, as you can tell... About 10 seconds later, it is all gone. And by the way, here's the American flag tank that I set up in the last video. Of course, I am going to be getting an African butterfly fish for the tank. Uh, it'll be really the only fish in here. It'll be kind of like chilling up at the surface. And uh, yeah, that'll be in about two weeks or so from now because uh, I got to let it cycle for now. So I'm going to go and pop a cube of blood worms in for these guys to eat. It's been a little while since I've actually had blood worms. And look at them go. Just ripping it apart. You know, Electra Blue Jack Dempsey. Rosie Barb. Oh, here comes the other ones joining on it. And they do the same exact thing that basically the flower horn does. They just basically like rip that cube up and uh, they start to float around and the other fish start to get them. Look at that red eye getting out on that. That is one fat red eye tetra though. There's one of the little albino plecos right there. Well, that is pretty much it for now. Uh, we got some new tank mates for the puffers. They won't be in there for that long, but I'll of course get some new tank mates that will be better in there for the puffers and be better in that tank than the Daniels will be. Like I said, I'm going to move them out to my 30 gallon Tetra tank just because I think that will do a lot better out there. But that's pretty much it for now. Be sure to drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And that being said, you guys will catch you on the next video. Peace.